Blog Talk Radio. good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. This is Chopping It Up, brought to you by the Marching Podcast and Blog Talk Radio. I'm your host, Joe Beard, and happy to be of service for you today. Uh, Well, tonight, rather. Um, Today is October 25th, 2012, 8.30 on the West Coast, 11.30 on the East Coast. And tonight, we chop it up with Tamala Lewis. Tamala works for the AEG, um, <clears throat> the AEG, um, and she uh, is the coordinator for the LA Battle of the Bands upcoming this weekend. I was really excited to talk to her. I met Tamala when trying to find a point of contact for the Battle of the Bands. Uh, I've told the story over and over about the marching podcast being morphed. Uh, for me trying to do the Battle of the Bands here in the area. And then when I found out there, that there was one, I tried to contact whoever was involved uh, so I could, you know, help out some way. And I talked to Tamala, got in touch with her, um, and uh, <clears throat> saved all of her information so that, you know, one day in the future I could help. And now the future is here. The Battle of the Bands is this weekend. i read the flyer right fast for everyone involved. It's the uh, Battle of the Bands, Los Angeles High School Marching Bands, Drum Off. Who has the hottest drum line in the country? Uh, out of the schools, it's going to be Carson High School, Inglewood High School, Grenada High School, Dominguez High School, David Star Jordan High School. Uh, Compton High School, Centennial High School, all of these schools being in the Southern California area, and Rickards High School coming all the way from Tallahassee, Florida. Um, uh, I'll read some more information about the flyer later on, but we want to go ahead and get into the interview tonight. Uh, This is a podcast interview, so you won't be able to call in and talk to Tamala, but um, you can always email the show at marchingpodcast at gmail.com or tweet us at marchingpodcast. Um, Really excited about uh, the event this weekend. I'll tell you guys about it. Make sure you guys check out the blog, blog blog4.themarchingpodcast. Uh, blog uh, blog and the number four dot the marching podcast and you'll I'm actually talking about uh, the upcoming event and I will put my experiences there on the blog as long as you know as well as uh, post some things to the website. So let's go ahead and get into the interview here with Tamala and at the end, yeah, I'll go ahead and read some more information about the Battle of the Bands uh, so that you can find out about it if and if you're in the LA area. Um, uh, we'll find out and we'll let you know the information so you can get tickets or so you can support the event. So let's go ahead and get the interview on with uh, Tamla, Tamla Lewis. You are now here with the Marching Podcast, and um, I am here now with Tamla Lewis. Um, she is one of the coordinators dealing with the Battle of the Bands that's going to go on on Saturday. Really appreciated her time. How are you doing this morning, Tamla? I'm good, Joseph. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for being um, a guest and talking with us today, talking about the Battle of the Bands. I was really excited to have you on here. So um, let me get right into it. Where are you from? Um, I'm actually from um, Springfield, Ohio. Um, I actually grew up there, and then my parents moved to Detroit, Michigan as well. So that's where I, I that Midwest surrounding is where I'm from. Okay, that's that's good to know cuz I'm from St. Louis and Okay. That, that's, that's a great that's that's a likewise ideal. That's really cool. So, what was your first exposure to music? 
Um, you know what? I grew up in the music industry. Um, my dad was a concert promoter um, and did, you know, worked on the Cool Jazz Festival in Cincinnati, which is like the original of the Essence Festival um, for many, many years. And he also, you know, did some management with Ohio Players and the group The Slaves back in the day. So I grew up around the music industry, and, you know, this is this is what I know. So that's kind of how I got into this whole situation and then I actually um, ended up being in a recording artist on Columbia Records um, and then from there on just kind of started doing celebrity events and which led me here to AEG. Wow, that, that's really cool being a recording artist. So um, other than the music, so you were already exposed to the music and I guess with theory and singing and, um, and instrumentation and all of that. But Correct. what about your first experience with, like, marching bands, and, and specifically the show-style marching band? Well, you know, from uh, when I graduated from high school, I actually went to, went to Atlanta to go to college in Atlanta. I went to Spelman there. I also attended American College there. Um, and then I actually, from that experience, you know, when you, when you go to school in the South, you're around all of that constantly. <laughs> right. um, and then you also end up, you know, everybody goes to Howard's homecoming, so you get that experience. So when you, when you have that surrounding you automatically, um, you know, it's like it's not a football game. Everybody comes to the game, but they also mainly come to see the halftime show. Right. So, um, so it's one of those things that you experience in college, and it just it stays with you. It's just it's our culture. It's something that just stays with you. And when you go to an HBCU, it just lives with you. And even if you don't go to an HBCU, once you attend one of those games, it stays with you. Right. So that's pretty much how I got, you know, introduced to the show style marching bands. Yeah, and that and that's really cool because that's why I hope that um you know, that's that's what we do here and that's what I hope that people get the experience, you know, before they get to decide. You don't necessarily have to go to the school, but just as long as you have that experience, you know what Correct. I mean? Correct. Um it's really, really important. It's it's made a difference in my life definitely. So uh, sticking on you now, um, and you're doing big things, really proud of you and that great Spelman education. Um, <laughs> uh, when did you start with AEG? I actually started with AEG in 2003. Um, I actually, um, we're going on our 10-year anniversary here at the Home Depot Center Sports Stadium. Um, I actually have been here ever since. I'm, I am the director over community affairs and also um the charitable foundation for the venue, um, where our, our partner um, and our other venue is Core Staples Center, which is also an AEG venue, um, and stadiums and teams all over the country fall under the AEG um, umbrella, but this is where I started, and I've been here ever since. Okay, now is AEG, AEG is that an acronym for something? or? Yeah, Anschutz Entertainment Group. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. So it's a great. It's an entertainment group. Um, outstanding. So, um, the particular event it's a outstanding battle of the bands, and I've told our listeners over and over again. You know, I I wanted to have a battle of the bands, and then I found out about this event, and and I got to meet and talk with you. Um, could you talk about how the event started? Like, how did it come to fruition? Well, it's one of those things where coming from, you know, when I started here, some of my responsibilities were to bring um, very exciting events um, that are youth-related to the to the venue. And coming from a music background, my first thought was music education. So that was one of the first events that I actually put together and planned and created and tried to come up with this and then added the whole Southern show style element to it, which was interesting because, you know, this is the West Coast, and a lot of yeah. the bands here are more your core style type of bands, and they perform a lot different. But there's a lot of inner city schools here who do perform in that manner, and it was very important for me to get that entertainment out there and also bring it and make it a nationwide event where it also brings the South and the East Coast and all of these other high schools to Los Angeles 
to give the experience to L.A. because there's a lot of HBCU alumni here um, mm -hmm. on the West Coast, and to actually bring that experience here for all of the youth growing up it was truly an exciting thing that I wanted to make happen, and I did my best to make it happen. Um, but, again, you know, you're going to hear the folks say, oh, well, why are you just doing this for a Southern show style type of marching? because I wanted to do it for our inner city schools because those are the kids that are losing their music and arts department. Right. And if this is their way of performing, then I wanted to give them an outlet to do just that. So that's how it all came to fruition. Wow. So so you essentially, um, after you were hired with them, you just, you just, you had the idea and you just kind of, you just made that, like made some calls and made things happen in that manner? Correct. Exactly. Wow. Okay. And and with the backing of the AEG, I, I guess it was uh it was was it easy to get things done? It was. It was. It was easy to get a lot of things done, but it was also you know it also is always come of a question you know to a lot of people who don't understand the show style marching was the question was you know will we fill the stands you know because this is a business and so and my thought was. Yes, we will, and we will make sure that those stands are filled and also to make sure that, you know, that everyone gets a very entertaining show. And also I wanted to keep it at a very low price for that so that everyone could come and enjoy themselves and make it a family event. So, you know, so getting everyone on board was not hard. Um, I wanted to add another element to it, so I reached out to my friends over at VH1 Save the Music Foundation. Oh. They do not work with high schools. They only work with middle schools and elementary schools. So trying to get them to sign on to this for high schools only was a little you know, a little hard, but when I explained to them what my passion was and that we can make this an all-around situation where proceeds from the event then go to providing instruments for those middle and high school kids through them, then we had a whole situation where not only this was dedicated to high schools, but middle schools and elementary schools were winning through this event as well. Wow, that's great. So so you're able to, to touch more people, to touch more kids. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, because that definitely it, it makes a difference, especially at the middle school level, because that is the prime age for kids to start learning music. You know, exactly. And to, and to pick up pick up the instrument. My the band program at my school growing up, I remember it started in the fifth grade, and and that's usually I'm sure that's where they start now or around that age. So. Right. It's good to get them ex exposed because I mean, if you if they see the experience at a young age, they're gonna want to do it right then, you know. Right, right, and we we have to keep we have to do our best to keep music education in these schools because in a lot a lot of cases these programs are saving these kids' lives. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of these band directors are parents to these kids. Right. I mean, I've seen and heard many many stories. Um, you know, that has happened from, from bands from the moment I tell them to the time that they arrive here, the, you know, the things that some of these kids go through, because some of these high schools are in the roughest neighborhoods, you know, in their area. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of things when they leave the school they have to deal with, um, and before they get to school in the morning they have to deal with. Mm -hmm. And so it's very challenging, um, but it's very rewarding all in the same. Yeah, that is that is. I, I I totally agree. So when, uh, what was the first year of of the Battle of the Bands? Like when did it start? Two thousand and four. Okay, two thousand and four. And yes. And it was um for all of the high school bands in L. A. Is is that where it touched? No, it was. We started from day one. It being a nationwide competition. Okay. So from day one, it's always been a nationwide competition. Um, I think that first year we had four out of states. I, be I believe it was Frank Ballou from out of Washington, D.C. We had Redan from out of Atlanta, Georgia. We had a school out of Chicago. Um, we had we had quite a few. So it's been a nationwide event from day one, and we, we try to um, – try to make it 
balance as possible with our local groups and our um and our out of state groups as well. Right. So so like the so like the, they don't get they don't get uh forgotten, you know, so to speak. So um and this is a competition where pe- Yes it is. Okay. So um um who are the judges or um was was it tough finding judges to judge this event? You know, it's never been t- that's been the easiest part of this because what we try to do, one, I always try to bring in HBCU band directors because they use it as a recruiting trip to them because it was exciting for them because now it allows them to come to the West Coast and pull kids um, from this area that they may not necessarily ever get to see. Mm-hmm. So it it opened it up for them. They use it as a recruiting trip. Most of them come in a week before and use that time to visit the schools that are in the finals. Wow. And then they actually look at them for scholarships and things of that sort. So it becomes a recruiting trip for them, and that's what's great about it because it, it opens those doors up for these kids that necessarily these band directors may never see. Right. And then it also allows the kids to actually see, um, you know, the Southern schools and the East Coast and the Midwest schools and see how they perform and the discipline and the things they learn from them as well. Um, you know, some of these kids have, have only seen this type of marching on TV. Mm-hmm. And so it actually gives them a chance to see it here on the West Coast as well. Yeah, that, that I mean, that's really exciting because that's really what it's about. That's where a lot of folks learn things from is, you know, from these events and you know, there's always a lot of debates and a lot of discussions afterwards. Right, um, and, right. And that's the fun part, you know. Right, exactly. Um, so um, have there there have have there been a lot of obstacles? Because it sounds, you know, super positive. Have, have there been a, uh, any obstacles with maintaining the Battle of the Bands over the years? You know, the only challenge is, is the challenge of the reason why we're doing this event, and that's the challenge of saving our, the music and arts in our schools. I mean, w- the the thing that I think depresses me, the, you know, that really bothers me through this event is when I reach it, when schools are incredibly talented and they win the event or they come in first, second, or third, or they have a, or they're one of the, you know, the runners up, just the talent that comes here and then you call the school the next year and you find out that they no longer have a oh, band. Oh, wow. You know, those are the things that really hurt me because I mean I remember the first time the very first event when I called Frank Ballou and told them that they actually out of Washington DC and told them that they actually made it in the competition I was not aware that at that time there was a shooting at the school and there was a mercury spill at the school and the school had a lot of bad press at that time Mm -hmm. so when they sent in the videotape i'm not aware of all of this is going on but i selected them as one of the finalists to come here when i called them on the phone to tell them that they were one of the finalists you could hear the band director crying you could hear the kids Mm -hmm. crying some of these kids have never even left dc before right never been on a plane before and to you hear that and and then to come out here and then see how talented these kids are and to see because it affects everybody when these departments are because if we keep going down the same road there may not be hbcu bands right because they need to get the kids to be and if the kids aren't getting this education in high school and in middle school and i mean it affects everybody Mm -hmm. it affects everybody and so you know so it's very important that we try to keep these music and arts alive. And that's I think that's the real thing that bothers me the most is when I send out an email and tell everyone it's coming back, here's the dates, and then it bounces back and I call the school and they're like, we no longer have a band. You know, and wow. they're like, well, what happened to all of those kids? Right. You know, and that's what really hurts the most. Yeah, that that does hurt. I mean, just, I mean, you, you, you told the story well because, I mean, that, you would make sure that, and and I know people from the D.C. area, you know what I mean, um, and it was a blessing for a lot of them to be in college, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Right, uh, right. D- you know, D.C. is no joke. Um, so just anything and just any, you know, uh, bad environment, anything positive that, you know, gives us an avenue um, to get out, you know, that's just it's why it's commendable for what you're doing. And, and it's great, and, and, and much props to the AEG for you know, supporting you and all that uh, that they're doing as well. Exactly. Um, so, 
that kind of rolls into my next question. I was going to ask you what was your most memorable experience uh, with the Battle of the Bands. Was that it, or do you have another one? My the that is one. There's many because you know there's many because I mean there's experiences where kids were performing and practicing to come here, and then they have to come here, and they, I mean, there was one particular band that lost a, a, one of their band members um, in a shooting before they got here, and they actually had to come here and perform at the very best, like a week after this happened, and they dedicated their performance to that person, and while they were doing their dedication, they actually made a cross on the field. It was oh, amazing. Wow. And, I mean, those moments that you have, and then you have the great moments like the very first event where 12,000 people filled the stands for this event. Mm -hmm. And for the very first time for that to happen, it was truly, truly amazing to see the support that came out and the constant support that these people have keep coming back every single year. And this year is a little different because we changed it to drum lines only. So it's the Battle of the High School Marching Band drum off. So this is the first time we have done drum lines only. And the only reason why this change was so important is because we wanted to keep this event going and we knew the budget cuts were hitting the schools heavy. And it's very difficult to bring 250 people plus yeah. across country. Yeah. And so we wanted to keep the event alive. So we said, how can we do it where the kids still benefit, but we also keep this event going and I said let's do drum lines only let's see how this works and I, can I just tell you that I've I've heard what's going to happen this Saturday from these band directors and they are not playing <laughs> <laughs> they are not playing so it's uh, it's going to be a great show and it, it will be our first time doing drum lines only but it's going to be a great show regardless oh yeah I, I mean that's that's usually used as the ambassador for the band a lot of times is the drum line, you know, because right. they do all they do more of the the flash and a lot of the, the thing mechanical type things, you know, just from people just playing the instrument where you just hear. They actually have the visual and the sound, you know, and uh, Right. And, and I was, it was great for me because on top of it, I was um, blessed enough to get the Percussion Kings to come out and perform at the event, who are some of the members from the drumline that performed in the movie Drumline. Oh, wow. So they are actually performing this Saturday as well. Um, Pop Price, who actually played, who was the drummer for Nick Cannon, is actually one of our judges as well. Oh, so, wow. So, so it was great to be able to get them on board to participate this weekend as well. Yeah, I mean, that's really exciting. I'm, I'm really excited about uh, about going and about being there, and, and I'm really happy that I have a camera finally uh, <laughs> to actually record, <laughs> record stuff. Um, but but yeah, I mean it's it's gonna be really really exciting. And, um, you know, I, I was, that's why I, I was really happy that um, that I, I kept in touch with you and and everything was going uh, with the green lights and it's just gonna be a positive day. And I want to try to make sure I expose as many people back east as I can about the event. Um, so 2004 was the first year. This is 2012. Do you right. have a favorite year, or do you have a year where you're like, oh, man, this is this is the best one? No, because you know why? Because every one of them, they're all my babies. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like they're, I mean, every one of them, it has it has it has added a different element to it, and I mean the celebrities that come out for this event have been unbelievably supportive throughout the years. I mean they have come out in in full 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 effect, and um, you know and I, I think it's it's been one of those things where every single experience has been a great one, and I don't have a favorite because the bottom line is to to showcase these kids and to show their talent, and every single year they have done just that. I mean, and, and to hear the experience from some of these local schools that say, you know, I couldn't get anybody to join the band until I got into this event. Now we have a waiting list. Wow. You know, those are the stories that go, okay, you know what, I know I'm doing the right thing, and I'm going to do my best to keep it going. 
So I can't say there's a favorite because every year, you know, it, it's a great event. Yeah, that that's actually really, really cool. Um, we're getting towards the end of the interview, um, and I would like to ask uh, right fast, or is, is there any future upcoming events uh from the AEG the that's uh that that the listeners would uh, may be interested in? Uh, well you know what? We move right into Battle of the Bands on Saturday to Monday we actually do our Halloween event, which is our big Halloween bash we do every year for a thousand kids to come out. Um, it's a view where they actually trick or treat at the venue, and all of our, um, a lot of our teams from the AEG umbrella, our venue, come out and they decorate suites. And this year we have, of course, our LA Galaxy, which is our, this is their home facility. We have the LA Kings, we have the LA Lakers, we have the LA Sparks. Um, we have U.S. Soccer Federation, which is here as well. We have so many people that are coming out and going to decorate suites, and these kids from 2 to 12 can come out and decorate, I um, mean, actually trick-or-treat, I'm sorry, and, and just enjoy themselves at a safe environment and this is what we do every year and this is like our seventh year doing it so we keep it we keep it going and uh, we have a lot of of course our galaxy games are coming to an end but we're hopefully going to move into playoffs in november so just log on to the website to get more info on anything at homedepotcenter.com okay great we really appreciate that and how can the listener uh Support the Battle of the Bands or anyone out there listening that may want to attend the event or just even support the event. Just come out on um, this Saturday. Doors open at 3.30. The event starts at 5 o'clock. It's only $10. Tickets are available at the door, so you can order them online um, on HomeDepotCenter.com, or you can actually buy them at the box office here. Just come out and support the event and cheer for these kids. That's the biggest thing you can do is just, just come out and enjoy yourself, bring your family, and just have a great time. That's outstanding. And uh, finally, uh, wrapping up, do you have any advice uh, for the young musician uh, or the young person out there? The biggest advice is do not ever, ever, ever give up on your dream because it may seem hard, it may seem rough, it may seem like you're running into all of these closed doors, or you may even be in a situation in your environment that's not the healthiest to be in. Understand that keep doing what you do, keep practicing, keep doing um, everything that you're doing, and trust me, your dream may come to, is going to come to you. It may not come when you want it to come, but it will come to you if you keep, keep, keep doing what you're doing. All right. Well, we really appreciate your time. Um, like I said, you should be commended for what you're doing, and much props to the AEG for providing the resources and providing the avenues and the platform to put something like this on uh, for the people of Los Angeles, especially out here in the Southern California area. Um, we really appreciate your time. I really appreciate this interview. I was really excited to that uh, uh, that we agreed. You know, we actually had to go through the paperwork and, uh, like, talk to the PR people. And <laughs> that was the first time. That was my first experience with all of that. But um, I really appreciate everything. Thank you, Joseph, and I look forward to seeing you on Saturday, and thank you so much for doing this interview. All right, likewise. Thanks again. All right. All right, you're back up here. Uh, we're back up here live. That was the interview with Tamla Lewis. It was really cool uh, Her and her time. Uh, let me go ahead and read the um, – let me read the flyer for this weekend. Who has the hottest drum line in the country? Saturday, October 27, 2012, Home Depot Center. Admission $10 starts at 5 p.m. Doors open at 3.30. Uh, who has the dr dr hottest drum line in the country? Carson High School, uh, Inglewood High School, Grenada High School, Dominguez High School, David Starr High School, David Starr Jordan High School, Compton High School, Centennial High School, and Rickards High School. Um, uh, opening speaker will be MC Light, uh, the rapper, that is. Uh, celebrity guests will be Sh uh, Sheila E., Nissan Stewart, and Pop Prince, Yo-Yo, uh, No You Ain't Radio Crew, and more to be announced, tributes to the legends of hip-hop, 
Uh, Spinning Live is DJ Dents. Performances by the Percussions Kings from Drumline Live and the Hit Movie Drumline. Harmony Project, Big Bang, Regional Youth Orchestra, and much more. So it's going to be an exciting time. I'll let you know through the blog and through the website all of the information. Uh, thanks tonight for the show. Thanks to you for listening. Thanks. Uh, we want to thank Guy first and foremost and thank Miss Tamela Lewis for the interview and AAG. Uh, go to Home Depot's HomeDepotCenter.com to get your tickets and to find out more information about the drum show. Check out our website, TheMarchingPodcast.com. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Thanks to you for listening. Remember, the eye is a better pupil and more willing than the ear. Advice may be misleading, but examples are always clear. See you next time.